Hi everyone, Kent Kentley here. I thought that I would read you this book that I just ordered for my nephew, which is uh, out of print now, and I almost didn't think about reading it on my channel before I gave it away. Uh, this is from a series of really cool books. This one is actually 51 years old. It's from 1967 by Patricia Coombs, Dory and the Witch Doctor. It's about a little witch whose name is Dory, and there were 20 books in this series. I've ordered 10 and I will read them to you as they come. This is the first one that came to me in the mail, used. I read it uh, on Thursday and really enjoyed it. These were one of my favorite series of books when I was a kid. So let's get into it. This is Dory. She is a witch, a little witch. Her hat is crooked and her socks are mixed up, and she has her very own cat. His name is Gink. One Tuesday, Dory was looking for her other shoe, while she looked, she made up a story for Gink about a crocodile. Dory was happy. Gink was happy. Gink, said Dory, Tuesday is my best day, and just for fun, I am going to be very, very, very good all day. No matter what happens, I will be good. Here she is with her sock crocodile. There was a knock on her door. It was Dory's mother, the big witch. Mother, said Dory. I'm going to be good all day. No matter what happens, I will be good. <clears throat> There's Dory's mother. I really like that she's just called the Big Witch. The Big Witch sighed. I am glad, she said, because something has already happened. Aunt Agra has come to visit. I'm going to the landing swamp to meet her right now. The Big Witch disappeared. And there are all the witches at the landing swamp. Dory put her arm around Gink. Oh, Gink, said Dory. All I have to do is look at Aunt Agra, and I'm in trouble, and it's too late to be bad. If I had time, I'd break out in spots and scratch and jump around. Then Aunt Agra would go away. Dory put on her other shoe. She combed her hair. She pulled up her socks and dusted her hat. And there she is, hugging her cat, putting her shoes on. Come on, Gink, said Dory. Since it's too late to be bad, I'll have to be good. Down, down, down the stairs they went and into the parlor. And there they go with their shadows behind them. An umbrella stand and some witch boots. Dory sat down quietly in a chair, and Gink, sorry, sat down beside her. Cook stopped dusting. She looked at Dory and frowned. Look at that cool house they live in, like the Adams family. Why are you just sitting down? What are you? What have you been up to now? Said Cook. I'm going to be good all day, no matter what happens. Said Dory. No matter what Aunt Agra says, I will be polite. It's too late to turn her into a toad or a jar of pickles, anyway. Humph! Said Cook and went into the kitchen. I don't think she believes Dory. Just then, the big witch and Aunt Agra landed in the yard. Dory opened the door for them. Hello, Aunt Agra, said Dory. How are you? Terrible, shouted Aunt Agra. I have pains in my head and pains in my toes and... Close the door! You're letting germs in here. Doesn't your mother teach you anything at all? There's the big witch... Aunt Agra, Dory, and Gink. Aunt Agra sneezed. She pointed a skinny figure, finger at Gink. Get to that! <gasps> Achoo! Away from me! And there she is, sneezing. Don't think Gink quite understands. The big witch frowned. Dory, Aunt Agra is allergic to cats. Put Gink in the kitchen. And here, said Aunt Agra, stamping her foot, make yourself useful, hang up my cloak. Dory took Aunt Agra's cloak. And bring some tea, hot tea, this house is chilly. And hurry up, don't stand there like a lump. And there's Dory holding Aunt Agra's cloak. Dory hung Aunt Agra's cloak up. She took a gink into the kitchen. And there they go, about to hang the cloak up and all the boots on the floor. 
cook, said Dory. Kink has to stay in here. Aunt Agra sneezes, and she wants some hot tea right away. Dory sat on a stool very quietly. I'll help carry the trays when they are ready, Cook. Cook mumbled and grumbled and frowned and fixed the tea. Looks like she made Gink something to eat, too. Dory carried the tray with sandwiches and cake on it. Cook carried the one with tea and cups and saucers and spoons as they went into the parlor. There they go. Lots of sandwiches for just three people. Well, said Aunt Agra, you took long enough. Dory, being a, Dory being a bother as usual, I suppose. Honestly, big witch, the child is a mess. Look at her hair, and her hat is crooked, and her socks don't match. Dory took the tray of sandwiches and cake to Aunt Agra. Would you like a sandwich and some cake, Aunt Agra, said Dory politely. Aunt Agra took some. Dry as usual, I see, big witch, you will never learn to keep house right. Ow! The tea is too hot. Neither of them looks particularly happy there, do they? Dory went back into the kitchen. She got a pitcher of cold water from Cook. Gink meowed. I miss you, Gink, said Dory. I'm being good, but everything is going very badly. Dory took the pitcher into the parlor. Here is some water, Aunt Agra, to cool your tea, said Dory. Would you like me to pour it for you? No, shouted Aunt Agra. You'll spill it all over my lap like you did last year, clumsy no manners, just like your mother. Aunt Agra poured water into her tea. Oh, she cried, now it's too full. I can't drink it. Do something, big witch. Oh, my head hurts. And you can see it drip, drip, dripping onto the floor. I don't think the big witch quite knows what to do to fix the situation. Dory went back into the kitchen and got another cup and saucer. The big witch fixed another cup of tea for Aunt Agra. How is your tea now, Agra? said the big witch. Terrible, of course, said Aunt Agra. Just as it always is around here. If I didn't come every year to put things in order, I don't know what would happen to you. The big witch didn't say anything. She just sighed. Aunt Agra banged her cup down on the saucer and pointed a skinny finger at Dory. Look at that, big witch. She hasn't touched her sandwich. She hasn't drunk her milk. She just sits there like a lump. And look at her face. She's been into your magic again. She's turning green. The big witch looked at Dory. Dory looked at the big witch. The big witch frowned. Stop turning co funny colors, Dory. Aunt Agra doesn't like it. I'm sorry, mother, said Dory. I feel sick. Aunt Agra stamped her foot and shouted, She isn't sick. She's pretending. She's been up to her old tricks. Poor Dory. The big witch looked at Dory. She felt her head. Go upstairs and get into bed, Dory, said the big witch. I will call the witch doctor. And off she and Gink go. Dory is very green in the face. Dory got Gink from the kitchen and went up, up, up the stairs. She put on her nightgown and got into bed. Gink sat down beside her. Dory could hear Aunt Agra downstairs, stamping her feet and shouting at the big witch. The big witch was starting to shout at Aunt Agra. Oh my, said Dory. She pulled the covers up to her chin. Soon a shadow whooshed across this window, and something landed with a crash in the bushes. Dory sat up. It's the witch doctor. I feel better already. Dory heard footsteps coming up the stairs.